the lions are, are spread out. And what we think might be two prides could in fact be one giant pride. It might be even smaller fragmented prides. It might even be a combination of, of the two, in which case prides will form and then, and then disband and form again. We just don't know. Even the line researchers around here say they don't exactly know what's going on with all these line prides. And it's going to be very interesting with all of you out there to try and get to the bottom of it over time. It's getting a little bit darker and uh, a little bit of out of the range of our infrared lights. That male lion's lying about 150 yards off from us at the moment. But facing us and the zebra is a little bit closer and so I hope when he does decide to get up and move we'll be able to see him. He is beautiful though. Male lions at about five years of age to about nine years of age reach their their maximum size but as they take over prides the testosterone levels actually increase when they are pride males or dominant in an area and that forms the growth of that black mane that you're seeing there and it has been proven that females are more attracted to males with black manes than they are to males with blonde manes or even males with no manes however you know in survival terms females that come into estrus in areas where lion numbers are very low like namibia for instance um, up in the central northern central part of of namibia it's not uncommon for female lioness to come into estrus without males being anywhere nearby and then they will basically go for any male that comes a calling and it could even be um, a son so incest in lions in small or fragmented populations is not an uncommon thing and for the survival of the species females do sometimes subject themselves to the attentions of males that are related or very young or not dominant or nomadic or any other combination I don't think that that's going to be the case in this area the male lions in this area are just fantastic you know it's despite all odds you know male lions uh, in Maasai culture, male lions were hunted by young warriors as a, as a, uh, basically as a rite of passage. Okay, oh, you wanted to know when we tend to hear these big male lions roaring. Okay, oh, that happens um, around about now. In actual fact, same reason why we hear lots of bird calls and lots in the in the in the early evening and in the in the early morning. Right now a male lion will call just to re-establish where he went to sleep when the sun went down. And so this male lion is looking around, he's busy listening. I have no doubt that if he's so inclined as to protect his, uh, his domain, that he will roar anytime soon. Uh, I'm looking forward to an actual fact. And they'll carry on roaring throughout the evening. Sometimes if they get distracted by one thing or another, they could stop picking it up again in the morning. But a male lion on patrol of his boundary will roar every three or four minutes and will roar the entire evening. It's, it's no effort for them to do so whatsoever. He's busy looking at the moment at a hippopotamus that has come out of the Mara River and is making its way to feeding grounds adjacent to the river. We're quite close to the river where we are now. I'd say we're probably about 300 yards off. My bald head getting into your shot, please excuse that. Um, sorry, Debbie, it's just there off to the left a little bit. There we go. David's looking at a lit screen that is... Mm, no. Sorry, Dave, over there. There we go. Here's your hippo. David's looking at a very bright screen that is uh, overwhelmed by the evening as it comes on, and sometimes it does make it a little bit more challenging to find these things, but being the artist he is, picked it up very quickly. So hippo come out this time of the evening. They feed for not a long time. By 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, hippos are almost always back in their ponds. Very few hippo uh, with grass so close to the edges of the rivers will actually be out longer than that. Um, in areas like the Ulifants River, which lies just north of Juma, you sometimes find hippopotamus only arriving back at the ponds 10, 11 o'clock in the morning sometimes in the dry season and that's because they've had to walk up to 20 or 30 miles away from the river to find enough grass to eat. 
This particular hippo I don't think is going to have any such trouble. So David's just informed us that we're going to be moving over to infrared. So excuse the change that's going to happen now. You're going to see a, rem a remarkable change to the picture that you're having a look at now. There we go. And isn't that wonderful? So now what we're doing is the camera's picked up or has changed the filter which allows it to utilize infrared radiation and that has created a slightly different picture. Now don't forget we don't have any artificial light on this story whatsoever. This is you looking at this picture as it's getting dark here. Let's listen to all the noises. Crickets, Franklins. Is lovely. Now, it's also not uncommon for for lion to hunt hippo. I would imagine that lions would either hunt a hippo that, that gets too close to a bunch of them and looks injured or weak in a particular way, or um, if there are lots of lions and they're hungry, or the hippo is weak or injured that lions will single it out. But they're not the usual prey item for for lions. However, there are some places in this world where lions will hunt anything, even elephant. You can see this is around about that I'm feeling the tension build. I think it's male lion. Come give us a roll, big guy. Let's, let's hear you lay claim to this area and pick a fight. Male lions are designed to fight. There's always that question, you know. A tiger, which weighs, which weighs more than a lion, or a lion, which one would win in a fight? And I've always backed lion. Lion are sort of purpose-bred fighting machines. And a big male lion like this has a lot of experience in fights. No, he's not going to roar. He's going back to sleep. How could you do that? 